When I was invited to speak here at State of the Net, I start asking myself, what is the biggest transformation that the internet uh, has made to cities? And, um, and um, what I think is that uh, what we are facing now is a big transformation on long-term long processes. This is the biggest change on public policies. What is happening is that the urban transformation is becoming day by day similar to an art process. As uh, Ansori Kobris, the uh, director of the Serpentine Gallery would say, is that uh, nowadays when we think transforming a city, we need to think as a, a city as a, an exhibition and we have to curate it. But this is also very easy to say, because if you look now, the word curating is used every day for everything. Uh, the New York Times spoke about Seoul as, a, as an open museum, open air museum, and the chef uh, working in the restaurant as uh, curators. You can find curators of color pants or uh, um, um, shopper curators, and also the driver of the tracker for the eye line in New York are called curators. The same is a website suggesting people to create their social not network. And also the uh, poker player uh, defined uh, the, their play a wave of curating their depression. But if we go back to the real meaning of curate, uh, we realize that the first terms curator was used to, in the ancient Rome, uh, to the people who, care, uh, who were carrying uh, the public works. After it was used during the Middle Age to people caring to the soul of the people. Only during the 18th century, we start using curator uh, the, uh, as, a, as a figure who take care about the colle national collection of a collection of, of arts. Passed through different phases. Uh, but what I think is interesting uh, is that at the beginning, uh, at the beginning of the idea of curators in the art world, uh, the paintings were, were um, hanged uh, on the wall, one nearby the other, and the curator was the person caring how to put all the pictures in, in, a, in the wall. Only with Monet, we start having art pieces bigger and bigger, uh, taking the entire wall of a museum, till Duchamp, who start using the entire space of a museum as a, an exhibition of an art piece. Till today, oh, till the 19th century, I would say, the 20th century, where we start using the entire museum as an art exhibition. And now, we are back to think on a city as a museum, the, a public official as a curator. This obviously is uh, related to the number of information and the speed of information going around in the world. And this is a, some time, in some kind uh, the effect of internet. Uh, and, but this is also creating a, a big crisis inside politics, for example. Uh, we politics is not anymore able to think on a long-term vision, to work on a long-term process that a city needs, uh, but so we are, from one side we have politics, uh, a politicians speaking about slogan, but without being able to really think on what to do. And the other side we have very old and boring politicians unable to communicate what they are doing. So what we tried, uh, what I brought to you is three examples. Uh, of three projects I have made in Mantova, and uh, both, all the three of them were th reflecting on how we can build a long-term process, but finding a way inspired by, for example, the art world, 
to communicate what we are doing uh, day by day and to make like a long process interesting. The first one was about new lights for Mantua. Uh, it's, it's a space, this is a complex uh, designed by Giulio Romano. Giulio Romano was uh, like a, a scholar of Raffaello. It is a really big and interesting building and uh, it was abandoned. It's a public building, it was abandoned and it was put on the list of selling buildings for 200,000 euros. When I arrived, I said, okay, I'm gonna build, I, I'm gonna buy this building, I'm gonna make my own apartment inside. Uh, obviously, it creates, a, it has a lot of problems of, infrastructure, of structures and uh, people living inside, um, drugs, people selling drugs around, and uh, the citizens is changing completely the way of using the city and going through another part of the city. We are in the center of the Mantua. When we arrived, the mayor told me, okay, you have to solve this problem, but you don't have money, and, uh, but we have to explain what you're doing. And the first idea I had, uh, it was to, I realized that people was for, for uh, the, the people forgot this part of the city. It's like a body, you know? When you cut a hand to a, to a person, he can survive. He's gonna forget that he doesn't have the hand. He's gonna think he's with the, all his arms. And the city is the same. If we have a problem in a part, citizens is gonna find their own solution, even if politicians are not able to make a transformation. So the first step was to bring back this part of the city to the uh, imagine of the citizens to make the citizen conscious that they have a part of the city that they were forgetting. So we just decide to put light in the building, uh, a temporary uh, project. We spend 70,000 euros, and we put a boat on the river, because from the Second World War, anyone was uh, going on the river. So we just brought people back on, the, on this part of the city, and this was so successful. Uh, obviously, with the light, we stopped the people with uh, people selling drugs, changed the zone. Uh, there were more people passing, so more control in the city. And the project was so successful from the city and so requested from the citizens that we found a uh, foundation uh, to put the money and make the restoration of the building. This is a four years process, but we made um, this, 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 the process visible to the citizens, and they were happy to wait and to understand what was happening. The second one in, is Archipelago di Ocono. Mantova is a is this small city, and uh, the water from the and, and, this, and the Mantova is surrounded from three lakes. But the water coming uh, from the Lago di Garda arrived in Mantova polluted. And this is not because the industrial area, but it's because uh, uh, the allevatori, non so come si dice, come? Farms put uh, material in the water. And, uh, but from Lago di Garda to Mantova, we have so many small cities that politicians are not able to make a unique discussion and to put these people in jail because it should be easy. So we realized that the first way of changing the situation and to start a long process was to bring the consensus of the people, to bring people back on this part of the lake and to make them asking for a, a, a resolution of the problem. Because without people, we couldn't, and just with politi politics, we couldn't solve the problem. So we create a stage on the lake, and we gave the stage, and uh, we start using the stage as public piazza. We just gave to the people. We said, please come and do what you want. We just organized the opening with the orchestra, orchestra of Mantova playing. The second year, we put uh, a, also a direct connection to the river, and we just gave, we, for the first day we put a piano, and for the rest we gave to the citizens, and we let them use it as a, as a square. And the, for the first time they look at the 
city from a different point of view. They start thinking on the lake as a part of the city and as the, uh, the city as a part of the landscape. Obviously, this is a really long process to clean the water units years and you need a lot of money. But there is no reason to, to clean the water if uh, the culture around the water and the, our world is not going to change. So we have to start to change in our mentality. And we can do it just only involving people on, in the process with really simple gestures. The third one, the third project, and just this is all photos of the opening. There was all the city coming to visit the space. It was a temporary uh, a stage. There is no any more there now. Oh, this is also a video anyway. Uh, and the third one is uh, related to Google. We decide to Mantova is a big problem uh, because uh, it's a historical city. It's super nice, but tourists uh, uh, that doesn't that tourists don't, do not stop to sleep in Mantova. They go to uh, Padova or to uh, Parma or to Milan. Um, so we need to, to we need to increment the tourism. So we decide to start with an, the like explaining all the uh, import all the all the culture that we have in the city because generally the people know just Palazzo Te, Palazzo Ducale. So we for the first time in Google Arts and Culture we presented it as an entire city and we collect all the institutions together. We put all the heritage in the in the in online, obviously it is not only an issue of spreading the knowledge and to share knowledge. We have books, in, for example, in Biblioteca Teresiana that uh, are not accessible even if you are inside the bibliotheque because they are too old. Uh, so we put back them accessible to all the people. The discussion was big. Uh, obviously, a lot of people were saying, no, we don't have to use Google. Google is going to steal our property and stuff like that. I think, I personally think it was giving uh, spread, spread what we have, the first needs. But what they do is, is to also use Gigapixel. And it was useful not just because you can really see something that uh, with, without technology, you cannot see, but it becomes also tools for controlling the state of the uh, heritage. Something that we can see there uh, is not visible uh, without uh, a techno the technology. You should uh, make a public competition, find a, a, a company, go upstairs, look the building, at Meanwhile, the building is going to be destroyed. Um, we also put Street View inside the building, and uh, we create a story about a building, the Palazzo del Podesta, is a building that is close from uh, centuries. We don't have money to finalize the, the restoration. Uh, so we start putting uh, also, uh, internet, uh, street view inside the building uh, as a way of bringing back uh, people inside uh, this part of the heritage. Also here, we are in the center of the city. This was useful not only per to, to make them uh, see some new discoveries and some new paintings, but also to uh, convince the, um, the Prime Minister to give our, us more money and to finalize the, the restoration. It was also a way of making a step in between a really, really long process. Uh, all of this to say that now in Triennale we are opening, uh, we are asking ourselves how can an art institution support an urban process and what is changing nowadays on the urban processes. Probably university in this moment are not so fast, they're not so uh, able to understand the changes that are happening. 
um, we decide to, uh, and because a triennale has always been like a space to uh, analyze and uh, absorb the transformation of the world and to make them reality. Uh, one example more than the others is, is the, the eighth Triennale Internazionale. It was after the Second World War in 1947. Um, and um, in occasion of the Triennale Internazionale, the, the institution built uh, a new neighborhood on the periphery of the city. The idea is, was to uh, work and to create, to put together the top level of architecture to analyze the needs of the people and to recreate the national identity starting from architecture. Uh, this, this institution has always thought uh, on the urban transformation. Um, another example that I really like is the, this one. In 1986 was the beginning of globalization. And the people start, um, and the institutions start discussing about the domestic space. So it starts to go back from the city to the individual space. And the reflection was how uh, the individuals can face the uh, a global uh, reality. And, um, and we had a really interesting example, like uh, El Teatro Domestico di Aldo Rossi, building a theater, like an apartment on a part inside the institution represented as, as, as a theater, uh, or the artist uh, apartment, or the nomadic uh, apartment. Um, so what, what we are trying to do is to create a research center now, together with the municipality, uh, is going to be a center to uh, analyze. Okay, I'm gonna to analyze what is happening. As uh, is going to be analyzed, what is happening in the um, in the city, but also uh, to try to create a kind of international research around the world uh, to support the public transformation. I would like just to uh, spread the message that uh, the Trinale is an open space and uh, we would uh, be happy to welcome all of you and uh, the state of NET to reflect in Trinale and to go ahead with the, the reflection of these days all together. Thank you. <laughs>